Hi guys, today I'm going to introduce you to a new CSS property that is supported right now on Chrome only, but it's going to be supported soon on the other browsers. I'm talking about uh, the aspect ratio property in CSS. I'm going to show you the new way of setting an aspect ratio to a div, for example, and other elements. And then I'm going to show you also the old way to set an aspect ratio for the same purposes. Without further ado, let's get started. Today we are going to talk about the aspect ratio and this is exactly the name of the property that is now supported from Chrome 88 and from some other browsers. Here, if we go to Can I, to can I Use, uh, we can see that there is a 41% um, support. One week ago was 3%, so this is increasing and uh, most a lot of browsers are starting to support this. Um, but uh, as you see, it's now supported everywhere. For this, uh, I have a solution for you, don't worry. So you can use it where it's supported and uh, you can use an alternative where it's not. So let's do a quick example just to show you how this thing work. And uh, let's create uh, three divs, basically um, A, B, and C. And we give it the class A, B, and C. Okay. For now, nothing happened, and here we can say um, that hey uh, is aspect ratio. <clears throat> um, sixteen by nine, right? As a video, and um, we need to give it a background color. Uh, background color. We can give it lime. Okay. If you see now, it doesn't matter if I resize the screen, uh, the proportion and the aspect ratio is maintained by this div. And this div is empty. And uh, this is pretty, pretty cool. So uh, right now, the height is, uh, sorry, the width is 100% of the container, right? By default, because this is a block element, right? Because the A class was a div. Um, if we constrain the uh, the width to the something else, for example, uh, 700 pixels, we're going to see that the aspect ratio is maintained. And um, here, uh, if we resize, something happened differently, right? Because here we have like uh, a, fixed, a fixed width. So is not gonna is not responsive this this scenario and we don't really want this uh, so we can say max width here is 700 right while in this case uh, if i resize the, the browser the max width is 700 but then the default width is 100 so this is a basic concept and um as i said um here we can also do something different rather than the width we can set the height and uh, we set the height to 300 pixels and um, you see if here we inspect we're gonna see that the height is 300 pixels right and so doesn't matter if you if you set the height of the width or the width uh, but the, um, you need to set one of the two unless you want to like 100% in case of block elements, right? This is why, because the formula to uh, calculate the aspect ratio, as you see from the aspect ratio itself, um, is something like <clears throat> aspect ratio equal to width divided by height, okay? So that's the 16 is the longer side and the nine is the um, smaller one. Now this is like based on proportion. So it's not the actual width and the actual height are 16 and nine. Uh, the, the, the proportion between the two is the one that um, determinates the aspect ratio. So you can set the aspect ratio like this with 16 by nine, or you can set with, um, 16 by 9 uh, 
by nine uh, calculated, which is one seven 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 eight. Just to show you, um, if we say we duplicate this and we say this is the B, and uh, and we say that um, the aspect ratio is one seven seven, and here we give uh, um, orange red as color. You see, these are are um, equal. Just to make it uh, one after the other, um, I can say line block. So here we see that they are basically the same thing. So they are equivalent. Now, which one uh, is the best? Uh, I honestly prefer better the, the fraction uh, because we avoid to have like all these uh, digits. Um, and uh, here in case somebody wants to like round the number, and then it's the same, but um, you know, I feel like this is more precise, the fraction, uh, since it's gonna be calculated from the browser and it's gonna go as precise as possible versus the, the calculation number here. But uh, they are pretty much equivalent, as you see, uh, the, I don't see any difference between the two. So you can potentially use either one you prefer. Okay, uh, now that we know what's the formula of the aspect ratio, we want to put it like here because from here we need to evolve and understand deeply how these things work to make it work also when the aspect ratio uh, is not supported. Okay, so what we can do now? So let's um, let's revert this. Let's let's put the max width. We don't need the B anymore for now. Uh, we don't need a formula, and um, we we used in the previous video uh, the support rule. So how it works uh, that when you don't know if something or some rule in CSS is supported by the browser, you can use the support rule to say um, if this browser it supports the aspect ratio, and you also need to give uh, the value of it, any property it is then use it, for example, right? So we can remove it here and remove it here. Right? They use it, otherwise, no. And that's that's what happened uh, in, this, in this case uh, where we do have like our A and uh, is using the aspect ratio. If support was no, uh, here we don't even have the property. I like this more than uh, than put the aspect ratio here and uh, in case uh, it's not supported, it's gonna be, for example, if I say something like this, you see that it's gonna, <clears throat> the browser is, is gonna like ignore it, but it's also uh, creating a warning for that since it's an unknown property and uh, I, I prefer to have it like within this support block so it doesn't even appear if it's not supported. It's, um, it feels like a little bit cleaner even if it's, it's kind of equivalent as well. Uh, but let's say like this, right? So let's say if it's supported, we use it and that's what we want. Okay, now let's... Let's do the case where it's not supported. So where it's not supported, we're gonna do we're gonna do this, right? And uh, remember that the aspect ratio is calculated from uh, the width divided by height. So if you want the height of an element. Um, you want it, you need to flip the equation and you say that height is equal to width divided by aspect ratio. But the aspect ratio was width by height. And so let's go a bit further. This is like split by width by height. That becomes um, width multiplied by 
height split by width. Now, in a second, everything will make more sense. And so basically here, if I want to know the height, um, I'm going to say that um, I'm going to say that the the width, which is 700, in this case, let's say the, the max width, right? So you want to have like a like calculation of 700 multiplied by 9, which is the height, split by 16, which is the width. And now if I, I remove... Um, uh, if I remove the aspect ratio from here, and uh, here I just put support for now since my browser is supports the um, this, I will have the result which is the one that I want. So basically, the aspect ratio formula it does the exact calculation. So given a width that we have that can be under percent if the element is blocked. Uh, it's going to calculate what's the height uh, relation with the aspect ratio that we give and we provide. But we can do the opposite and calculate the aspect, the height, uh, by having adjust uh, um, the width uh, in the in the perfect aspect ratio, aspect ratio when we know what the aspect ratio that we, we want at the end as a result. Okay, so... The support thing for now, this was to explain you how it works, um, but we can uh, just be in a simple case where we assume and we already saw that uh, this browser is supporting the aspect ratio. So let's uh, clean up this code. Actually, let me make this to be B um, and uh, we clean up the rest of the code. So I want to be the B uh, is uh, orange red and uh, the max width. We can put it in a in a div. So we say for now we say every div has a max width of seven hundred. So now we have like two divs that are um, the same aspect ratio and. Uh, now, if we resize, we see that the first one that uses the aspect ratio uh, is going to maintain it. The second one is not. This is happening because uh, we are calculating the height of the second base of 700, which is the max width. But um, in this case, the 100% of the parent is not uh, 700, but is less than that. And so our initial aspect ratio for the orange box is not maintained anymore. So how we fix that? Um, well, we fix it by by saying that uh, um, this is like first, first of all, this is the mean height, it should be, right? But this is not going to make our, our life easier. Now here we have the max width, but uh, we need to kind of like start to using this calculation, the um, the viewport width if uh, is uh, less than 700 because that's what uh, we want to make this shrink down and maintain the aspect ratio so for doing this is like you just need to use a simple um, CSS function which is called mean mean and 100% uh, VW because this is the viewport width that you want here right so what's happening here is like if uh, the mean function in css is just getting the value between the two or more you can give like even more um, but it's gonna get the one that is like um, the smallest one between the two given and so now when we resize you see that perfectly both uh, um, 16 by 9 uh, rectangles are resizing and uh, be careful that the mean height is um, if I put it height again nothing changes but because we didn't insert any content within the boxes yet but since the aspect ratio one 
uh, will break basically the aspect ratio when the content overflows the box. To simulate the same effect here in the B, we want to have like the mean height. And we will see that in a second. Okay, so this is good. Now let's go to the um, to the last um, div and I'll show you another way to basically set uh, this aspect ratio in a div uh, without uh, <clears throat> having to use the aspect ratio property and here we can say blue um, and here rather than me hide we can just do padding Ooh, not passing padding and uh, here we do the same exact calculation um, now we can see that uh, uh, right now is not working as we want it because it's not padding but this padding you can choose between padding top if you want or padding bottom until the element is empty it doesn't really matter which one of the two uh, you are using but as you see now we have like the three element uh, with perfect uh, um, aspect ratio and uh, they are going to be responsive okay so everything is good until now if you want to have like an image in background you can set it directly in the as a background image in the div and nothing is going to be um, everything is going to be good for example i have uh, an image of my dog here and uh, rather than background color uh, i can say background image let's just uh, comment it out i can say uh, background image and I can say URL and is my puppy dot jpg okay so here is my puppy and uh, as you see um, it is a bit cut off let's let's change the, um, the aspect ratio to be uh, four by five since I got this from his Instagram account and so here is gonna be the opposite uh, five by four five by four okay and so now bigger than 700 let's do 400 uh, and also we need to change 400 here and 400 here <clears throat> let's make it display <coughs> inline block all right now they're in inline block, as you see, they just disappeared. This is normal because before the width was 100% when the div were like <clears throat> by default to display block. But now we need to kind of like set the width to 100% and then the max width to 400 pixels to make that <clears throat> show up again as they were before, but with a different aspect ratio and one next to each other. Now my dog... Uh, <clears throat> Our face is a little bit is cut off a little bit. Uh, we can do just uh, background position. Actually, let's do background size first, and we can say cover. Okay, so now it show up in the uh, in a more nicer way. And if you see, if I I I place this in uh, all the others. Boom, nothing changed. They are like perfectly, uh, perfectly the same. Okay, so let's remove my dog from the picture uh, at the moment. Um, and uh, let's say, okay, you don't want to have a background image, you want to have a text within this. Okay, no worries. We're gonna see what's the text. Um, uh, how the text is going to display in these three uh, scenarios but first um, in the we can transform this width uh, the same as uh, min between 400 pixels and 100% which is uh, uh, equivalent of of setting the width 100% and um, a max width of 400 pixels so it's kind of like a short, uh, shortcut and nicer way uh, to do the same thing. Um, we know now the aspect ratio calculation, so we can remove all these comments. Um, as you see um, here, this is can be 
the same as um, dividing by 4 and by 5 and dividing by 4 and by 5 right like this a little bit of parentheses okay because we were saying like width height is, is equal to width divided by the aspect ratio the aspect ratio is 4 by 5 and so like this i want to aggregate these rules in some variables so it's going to be easier um, to work with them later on if we want to change something right so we can say we can create the aspect ratio uh, variable and uh, we can say that is 4 by 5 right and so we can reuse it directly here and anywhere we use this so we can just say um, var Oop. right so now is not working in the other cases because here we kind of need to return a number and so we just need to use the calc here and everything is going to work uh, uh, as we wanted but we want to remove one parenthesis here that we don't need anymore and one as well from this one there we go and so now we have our uh, cleaner way so basically if i want to change the aspect ratio for 16 by 9 now whole three is gonna uh, they're gonna be uh, reactive i don't need to change it in three different places i can do another step where you see that the width here is the same for the three places because 100 percent for the first div is equal to the um, 100 uh, viewport width as well so we can just say uh, we can just create another uh, variable that is um, um, let's call it container width and we can just say that is equal to this okay and so every time we need to use that one state we can just use uh, this one all right so you see that now with variables everything is cleaner and every go we have like a very clean way potentially we can also set this one in a variable as well but um, for now i leave it like like it is <clears throat> and um, okay so now let's go to the fun part so where uh, actually you want to uh, add some contents on this and you see that uh, there are some differences in this scenario uh, so let's open up these three divs and uh, let's say that in the first we have a p tag uh, where we have a text of um, 50 characters right you see that this is gonna fill up uh, this part is gonna go a little bit down because it display line block and we want to just align it vertically but we will do it like later on um, you see that now we inserted uh, the three uh, texts and you see that the last uh, div is the one that uh, he became uh, um, he changed the aspect ratio because we said the last div properties um, to use the padding button and so that means that if the content is positioned relative within it then it's gonna add some more padding button if we were doing like the padding top solution we were adding in the top that specific uh, space and uh, and uh, as you see it's gonna work in a different way as well now uh, first of all let's uh, make all this the vertical align <coughs> vertical align top so they're gonna be on the top all together but apart this uh, the content of the c uh, div uh, uh, which is a p it should have a uh, position absolute to remove that extra space. And the C should have position relative 
okay? Now they are all equal. Now, if you, <clears throat> if we do a test and um, we resize this page, everything is good. Um, let's uh, increase a little bit the mean to be 700. So it's gonna hit the, so as you see, everything resized correctly. And um, everything works fine. Now, what if we have a lot of text, right? Let's go back to B400 here. And uh, let's, um, let's add a lot of text. So we have three, six paragraphs here, four, five, six paragraphs here, and six paragraphs here. Um, as you see, in the first two, the aspect ratio is not maintained anymore. What happened? Because the aspect ratio property works until the content is filling up the available space. And then it's going to basically change the aspect ratio based on the content. That's how the aspect ratio formula work. And before I said the mean height, because if I was setting the height, you see that... Um, in the second one, in the B, the text will overflow and the height was set. And so the text was going to be part of the outside of the box. Uh, to cover this up, we can always do the um, over, overflow heat in here, but uh, we're going to lose some text. And um, in case, unless we do overflow scroll, where we can like scroll the content, um, we cannot maintain the aspect ratio. So the same here in the um, in the A element, uh, we can do overflow it then and then the same. It's going to be exactly the same. But if we want to maintain the same rule that um, the normal aspect ratio has, we need to maintain um, the mean height here. Now the third option is kind of strange because you see we have like uh, six paragraphs, but they are all on top of each other because they are all position absolute and so they're gonna be um they're not relative anymore so if we if we remove the position absolute you will see that you have all the paragraphs and the padding bottom it comes back and if it was the padding top it was coming back as well so here with the padding uh, in the text um, the solution is uh, the one that you probably don't want to do if you have the text uh, but it's a solution that you, you can use if you have uh, just an image uh, within the box and not as a background image, but as an image tag. The image um, is position absolute and it's going to cover the entire, the entire space available. So now that we have my, my dog image, we can just, uh, I can just show you uh, in quickly and I can just do image. Uh, which is my puppy, um, JPEG, right? And so here we put my puppy and uh, we just do some resets to images because uh, we want just to have um, an image that is always with 100% Windows width. Okay, so it's going to be 100% of his container and... Um, we can say there is always position absolute. Uh, actually, let's let's say that uh, the the image here is position absolute. Otherwise, it's not because I want to show you also in the other places. And um, um, we we need to make uh, every div for now um, overflow hidden. So now the image is going to maintain the aspect ratio. So in this case, uh, you can uh, um, you can play with the padding top because the image is absolute, and so the content is not going to be the padding is not going to be added to the box itself. Um, now here we can also set the B height, and uh, if we, for example, use the same image in uh, all the three boxes as you see uh, it's going to display it the same way 
if we want um, to to make it like look a little bit nicer just for the moment um, we can just say transform translate uh, y minus 40 pixels something like this or 50 60 70 let's say there we go and now we have the, the picture of my dog here now if we change this to be 700 everything works the same way and if we resize everything resize correctly this feature as you saw is going to be so handy in the future when it's going to be supported from multiple browsers as well than only chrome until then happy coding